Especially my son and daughter. Let's put our hands together and bless God for their lives. Hallelujah. Pastor Yahweh and Ahikain, I want to salute you and say I appreciate you very much for all the great sacrifice and uh, the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. It's definitely yet to come. Amen. Glory to God. I want to bless God for all the leaders in the house. And for sure, we will be doing well. Put your hands together, bless God, hallelujah. And thank God. You know, and I'm believing God that in the next few minutes, revelation will pop up. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you will realize that uh, there is much help out there for you. And the keys that you're going to receive, you're going to tap into it that your life will be better. You see, I told you some time ago that <laughs> God strategically created us. When you look at the physiology of a man, you never see eyes behind the head. He gave us two eyes in front of us. It's very strategic so that we can keep moving forward. You see, Romans says something very powerful. It says that the creation teaches about God. So those who don't have access to Bible, they can look at creation and still know God. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. And sometimes I tell you, when I'm at the crossroads of life, I look at creation. I look at things that God has set already in place by his power through our Lord Jesus. And I learned a lot. I, I, I look at how, how a little egg and a little uh, 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 sperm come together and form a human being. And it is so small that you cannot see with the naked eye. And you have to use some sort of uh, 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 apparatus to look at it. They call it what? Uh, microscope. Are you understanding that? And from that tiny dot of a thing, there is heart in there. There is lungs in there. Intestines, brain, everything else. And that thing that you can see with the naked eye, it is like the dot of a pen. And in that environment, it develops from nothing. By nine months, it's a whole human being. And it pops out. And when it pops out, we don't, we don't say that this child is one day new. The child has just been born. Yeah, we never say his child one day new. What we say, one, one day, day old. old. One week we visit the child and say the child is what? One week, one week old. We never say one week new. In other words, God looks at his own structures he's put in place to teach us that we must grow in everything we do. 
and he never gives us any eye behind us to so that he's telling us that when you're moving forward, don't care about the things behind you. Because anytime you look behind, you take a minute out of your life. He told the Lord and his family, he said, don't look back. She looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. Hallelujah. Amen. You gotta progress. The day your mother met your father, listen to me, millions of your potential brothers and sisters are released. That's right. <laughs> but you are the one that made it to the end. <laughs> so even in conception, you are conceived as a winner. <laughs> And so you cannot live life as a loser. Amen. And you see, everybody needs help. So God sets up structures in order for your help to be. And God realized that I, God, I need help too. The difference between God and us is that everything God needs, he creates himself. But we, everything we need, we have to depend on somebody else. But God has a need. For him to maintain his name as God, he must have worshippers. Because he's an imposter if he doesn't have worshippers. So he says that if men will not worship me, I will cause stones to rise up to worship because at every particular time, there must be worshippers in order to maintain my name as God. And so by his throne, he sets elders and some funny, interesting beasts. And all they do is they worship in order to authenticate his status. And the Bible says that for them to make worship effective, different aspects of God's revelation comes out every minute. So they can sit down. They have been given thrones to sit down. There is a big throne. There is another big throne. And there are other small thrones. And God has said, sit down. And yet any time they are about to sit, a different wave of God's glory just shows forth. And they are so much in awe, they bow and go holy, holy, holy. By the time they say, okay, this time I can sit, another dimension of the glory comes. And holy, holy. And from eternity unto eternity, they can still not sit. That is why when we go up there, the crown that will be given us will cast it before. Not because we don't want to wear it, but the essence of his presence and his glory will cause us to worship. Why don't we start it now? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. To maintain his name as a father, he needs sons. Glory to God. Amen. And remember, the difference there is that everything he needs. Uh, he creates himself. That is why we say God doesn't have a need. Because everything he needs, he creates himself. So if you want life, you have to go to him. But he has life. So if today you decide you're not going to be a son anymore, there are others who are sons. So he never loses his position as a father. Yes. Glory to Jesus. Amen. He never loses that position. But you see, the interesting thing that we need to understand today is that God then sets people around you so they can team up with you for his purpose to be fulfilled. Nobody can do it by themselves. So the Bible says in Genesis 2, 18 to 23, God has created Adam and Eve. So he has created Adam. And in Adam, uh, he, 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 he told her that I bring you a bunch of animals. I want you to choose a suitable helper. Now, you see, in life, we have those who help, but they are not suitable. <laughs> uh, stay with me. Glory to God. So, for instance, you, you have a fine surface here, all right? If I want to drive the nail through this surface, okay, I feel it's a plaster board. If I use a sledgehammer to drive the nail through this, by the time I finish, the surface will be spoiled. The hammer is a help, but not a water, a suitable one. Glory to God. 
And a lot of us have had certain helps, but the help has not been suitable. So after solving one problem, another problem generates. And tonight I'm here to announce to somebody that God is sending you help that is suitable. Amen. And for that reason, your life is about to change and permanently change in the name of Jesus. I had only five people. Amen. I had only 10 people. Amen. I had only 15 people. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a shout of prayer. Amen. The Lord said that it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. And a lot of times, if let's read the King James, he says, I'll make a helpmate. And the problem we have with that is that we have limited that test to marriage. And that test has nothing to do with marriage. Mm -hmm. Because when you read the contest, God has created man from a place called Eden. But you see, Eden is a big place where only one part is developed, the eastern part, and he has put some garden there. So he goes at a place, a plain, where he has this particular soil called Adama. So he takes this particular soil, Adama, which is red arable soil, and out of that red arable soil, he creates a red man. So he named the man according to the soil. Because you have to understand that your connection with the earth and creation brings you prosperity and grace. And that is why you don't have to detach from creation. Because the Bible says that creation is in agony, waiting the manifestation of the sons of God. Why? Because in creation, all we need has been given it. The car you need comes from metal. Metal comes from water, the earth. The money you need comes from paper. Paper comes from what tree? The tree comes from the earth. Am I talking to someone? The house you need comes from sun. The sun comes from the earth. And the thing is that some people are taking advantage of the earth and the sons of God are suffering. And he's waiting for the manifestation of the sons. And we are not realizing that we're supposed to be on top. Even though we quote it at church. Hallelujah. Because every nutrient and every organic matter and so on and so forth, you see in the flesh, you can find it corresponding in the soil. Anyway. So he creates man and he brings him now into the garden. Now he brings the man into the garden. Then he says that man is acting that he is alone. And so he said, it is no good. Mm -hmm. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now if I'm going to make a helper, helper suitable, if I didn't go, just go ahead and make the helper suitable. Mm -hmm. Look at what he did. He says that, now the Lord God, have formed out of the ground all wild animals and all birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. Now, in English language, name is somebody coming up and telling you you are Julius and you are Shadrach and you are Dustin. But biblically, that's not where it works. Name epitomizes who you are. So you don't give a name to somebody unless you are able to know who that person is. So sometimes people name people wrongly and when they have grown, they change their names. Why? Because the name that was given them was not consistent with who they were, where, you understand, or are. So basically, you don't name people anyhow. When you hear the word of God concerning their life, then you name them. If you don't hear anything, you can name them anything you want, but as they grow, a revelation comes, you change the name. That is why Abraham, Abraham was changed into Abraham. That is why Sarai was changed into Sarah. Are you understanding that? We have Jabez and all those people whose name depicted who they were in the Bible. So when we talk about name, we're talking about the essence of the thing. Hallelujah. So then he says that he brought them to see, to see what he would name them. He brought them to see what he would name them. Let's, let's go gradually because I want to give you some revelation here. He brought them to see what he would name them. In other words, he brought them to him so he can determine whether any of them will be suitable for the purpose for which God has created him. And remember, God gave him an assignment. So he needed suitable help to do the assignment. So he looks at this person going, he says, no, 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 the way you roll, 
You're lying. <coughs> you do this, you do that. But you cannot be suitable. Then, chimpanzee came. <laughs> and also did the stuff. Then the tiger came. So listen to this. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was his name. Now that's not just a name that was given. It means that he, he induced in them function. All right? So the man gave names to all the livestock the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. And it says, but for Adam, no suitable helper was found. In other words, they were systematically looking for a suitable help within the animal kingdom. Amen. So after going through all the millions or the thousands of all the species, he realizes that, mm, and a lot of us, we have put around us help that is not suitable. And God wants to change something. The church needs suitable help. You as an individual need suitable help. Hallelujah. I'm going to shock you here and show you that, that even the concept of marriage here has to do with assignment. Are you getting my point? I was telling uh, the church the other day when I was giving this revelation to the church, and I said that by concept of relationship and ministry, I am married to a lot of people. By definition. Because as a senior pastor, I am the prime worshiper. And as the prime worshiper, I should be leading worship like it was done in the Bible. I should be ushering like it was done in the Bible. But God said that Aaron, you are the prime, but because you cannot do all those big things, I am bringing people who will link to you. He said your father's family, that is the Levites, they will come and serve in the temple. Now you will be a help to them, but they will also be a help made. In other words, they will hold your hands in order for the things in the temple to go on. So I cannot be on the keyboard and go and stand at the door and go and stand uh, in, in the choir place and start. So we put people there who can play the keyboard, who can sing, who, and these are suitable helps where the church is concerned. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor cannot get up early in the morning and come and clean this place and arrange it. Somebody does that. Somebody has to go to choir practice and sing. He comes in. All of you are suitable help for him. Now look at what we're, where we're going now. So he said, but for Adam, no suitable help was found. So, when he says so, it means that something has happened and therefore he's going to react to it. He says, so the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed it up and placed flesh with it. He did cloning, all right, cloning. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now. That tells you that he had done some stuff before. This is now. Bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. So you can imagine, he was looking, going around, looking at lion, saying, mm, lion, you can do this, but not that. Mm, the as you can do this, but not that. Mm, and then he stands there and says, ah, but I can't find anybody. And in a minute, he was knocked off. And then he comes back to life. And then you see the, on the possession, somebody that was standing there, looking like him. I said, wow, what happened within the next few minutes ago? I said, you're knocked off. And then she was taken out of you. They said, oh, then I'm going to call her woman. By definition, we have the same vision. By definition, we are going the same place. By the definition, we have the same frame. So we are going to accomplish together. 
That is what woman is. It is a silent. You see, the problem we have with the church is that because we tell you which is the truth and you shouldn't do that, don't have sex before marriage and stuff like that, what happens is that a lot of people are so eager to have sex and so they see a man or they see a woman and they don't think about Simon. They don't think about anything. Well, the first thing that comes into their mind, she will be good to sleep with. He will be good to sleep with. So then we are preoccupied with sex because we have gone through school, we have gone through university, and we have been suffering this thing <laughs> called sex, and, and our, our hormones are cracking up, the, 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 the spermatozoa are overflowing, and then, yeah, we feed down, we feed down. And so, and so we have some sort of infatuation, and then we meet this person, and we go to see the parents, and they say, we give you a date, and then we go to the altar, and then we say, yes, I do, and then you go to the hotel, and then, ah. <laughs> and then you ask yourself, what next? <laughs> what next? Then you realize that, oh my goodness, I'm going to stay with this person for the rest of my life. <laughs> that is why a lot of Christian marriages are failing. That is why Christian marriages are failing and unfortunately, the percentage in the world and the percentage in the church, if you do the mutation and everything, it looks like there's more divorce in the church than it's even in the world. This is a problem. Because we don't look at compatibility. We don't look at assignment. We don't look at what purpose is. We don't look at what God wants to accomplish. But the Adam says something. He said because he was taken out of woman. In other words, Adam was saying that what I need to accomplish has been personified. And because it has been personified, I will accomplish. So now I come to tell you, some people have been personified to bring you to your next level. And next year, by this time, you will share your testimony. You will say and say it again. You will declare in the name of God that, Lord, I thank you. Because somebody bears your gold. Somebody bears your silver. Somebody bears your, your oil. I'm telling you, your front incense and your mouth full of preaching now. I said, somebody bears something that you need. And they are bringing it to pass. I stopped back from London to announce to somebody, weeping can only endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. When your joy comes forth, all that the palm worm has eaten, the cacao worm has eaten, the locust has eaten, God brings a restoration. I see in a spirit somebody who has been prepared, let it be gold for you. I see in my spirit. Somebody who has been prepared, laden with frank incense for you. I see in my spirit a help that has been declared for you because you don't have it all. You don't have all the revelation. You don't have everything intact. But Jehovah God has prepared someone and that person is coming quicker. And listen to me, God has also prepared you to also be a blessing to somebody because you have help as suitable for the need somebody can Somebody say, I receive, I receive it. Glory to Jesus. So, 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 it's a bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. In other words, we're on the same wavelength. The weather is Azer. Azer means strength and fulfillment. The Hebrew word that is translated as says a powerful word. It means that the person God is bringing into your life is not going to cause you to diminish. He's going to bring strength. Because when you talk about bone or stone, these are all similar words in Hebrew. And when you talk about bone, so we talk about frame, and we're talking about backbone, we're talking about ability to stand, ability to do stuff. And listen to me, I grew up in Africa, and, 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 and when I used to go to the village, I, I see 
women go to the farm and they carry they carry yams on top of their head and they have a child right in front of them carry there and another child right at the back and they're holding another child just going and they are fine they didn't have very good uh, 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 midwives and all those kind of stuff uh, or medical stuff but when they are pregnant they just go out there and pop the child just comes out I'm not a bullshit that I'm not talking to somebody now, now, now the chief medical officer for United Kingdom is saying that there's too many what uh, 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 cesarean going on because uh, women are evolving because of the fight of equality uh, 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 and so women are, 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 not, are not doing what they have been endowed to do the fact that woman has ability uh, to cook and clean and take care of the child and, and, and do multi-tax it, 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 it's, it, it's a, uh, how do I put it? It, it, it it's a fact that God has actually endowed woman with a stronger strength and when you study the scripture, when the Bible says that woman is a weaker vessel, it's not talking about woman doesn't carry ability to perform. It's just talking about the fact that it wasn't woman that got instruction. Because when the instruction came to Adam, woman had not been created. Yeah. But woman is very powerful. Yes, yes. amen. Oh, I had only five yes, people. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I had only ten people. Yeah. I said woman is very powerful. Yeah. Let a man try carrying a child for two months. <laughs> <laughs> Let a, ch- a man try pushing, pushing a child. <laughs> when contractions begin to come, massacre was Are you understanding that? Look at the beauty of womanhood. You stay in the kitchen, take care of the child, cooking at the same time, ironing at the same time, and some are able to do everything so perfect. You leave that to us, we cry. <laughs> we cry. But the word here is that the person God is bringing into your life, if he carries the frame, he carries the frame or she carries the frame so you can sleep. When I get up and I'm going to church, you know what? I feel cool. Because somebody carries the frame to play the keyboard. Somebody carries the frame to take the microphone and sing. Sometimes I don't even get there when, when worship is going on because I have to preach in another church in Peckham before I come in there. But I know everything is perfect. When I work in minister of services, that's come to see me in my office and tell me the order of the day and everything because they carry the frame. Hallelujah. They are bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. They understand the vision. They understand what needs to be done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I bless God for their lives. One day I was in my office and the, the, my then office has, 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 was next to the kitchen and, and the person didn't know that I was in the office uh, and he was talking to somebody and the person said, we need to do this, we need to do that. And I heard clearly, he telling the person that, no, pastor wants it this way, you know how he wants his things. So let us do it exactly the way he wants it and that is what I insist we do it. I was like, oh my word. He didn't know I was in my office. He had no clue and that told me how genuine people surround me. This is what we call bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. It is not nothing to do with sex. It has everything to do with assignment because they understand your assignment. They know what you stand for. In the same way, not only for church or marriage or whatever, but for your very essence. There are times you need somebody who understands you. When everybody don't understand you, this person comes along you and he comes to be a helper. Listen to me. Helpers don't come and run. Helpers come and they stay. And they Make sure that your life moves on from grace to grace and faith to faith. And you know, helpers are always there. When you call them in the morning, they are there. You call them in the evening, they are there. You call them in the night, they are there. They are connectors who connect you and they disappear. But helpers, when they come into your life, you know they have come. You realize that I I, I go places and people tell me how wonderful our church is and how this and how that. You are such a wonderful person. I said, listen, how the things that go on there, I have nothing to do with me. Are you understanding? These guys, they come and they make plans and they put this to 
them. Sometimes they don't even tell me, but because they know my spirit, yeah. they know I will agree with that. Are you hearing me? And that is how it works. And, and listen to me, I am taking the, all the, the glory and all the honor for that. But there are people on the ground who are actually making things work. I prophesy over your life. There are people God is bringing your way, they're going to make your life work smoothly. In fact, I feel in the next seven days, something is about to happen to somebody. And the things that, oh my God, you have run away from it. The things that have eluded you, Jehovah God is about to orchestrate things. He is going to change things. I feel in my spirit, your testimony is coming forth. Power is coming forth. Grace is coming forth. Increase is coming forth. Expansion is coming forth. That means the devil has tried to bring in your way to make you stumble. It will not work because helpers have been released. I feel in my spirit the helpers have been released. That you will not touch your feet against a stone. In blessing, he will bless you. In increasing, he will increase you. I feel the north release. The south release. The east release. The west. I feel a new dimension of grace come over your life. Somebody is laden with gold. Somebody is laden with silver. Somebody is laden with powerful things. Man and frankincense. And your life is about to be beautified. I feel somebody who is a bone of your bone and a flesh of your flesh. Somebody who understands where you have come from, understands where you are, and understands where you're going. He's been released to hold your hand and support you and support you and bring you where you belong. I feel and I see all the wise men and the wise women. God is sending your way to change the story. The story has gone on for too long, but it's about time the story changes. I feel our oh, helper has been released to carry you another level. Ah, Moshe Karaba. Somebody give the Lord a shout. Let a bush. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, when you are connected with somebody who understands that he's a bone of your bone and a flesh on your flesh, you go nowhere. For the Bible says, when the God came, he said to the people, you go to eat my flesh and drink my blood because there must be an assignment and a link to Genesis. And he said to them, if you don't eat of my flesh and you don't drink of my blood, you can never be part of me. Are you understanding that where we go? Are you catching the revelation? So some people then left because they were helpless but they were not suitable. Hallelujah. But those who understood the revelation stood with him and then Peter looked at him and he said, to whom shall we go? Because you carry the words of life. We are ready to eat your flesh and to drink your blood so that your bone becomes our bone and your flesh become our flesh Hallelujah. until there is that connection you don't experience help people will come and they will go but those who stay will say that you know what to whom shall we go Mm. Let me give you some more revelations and we we'll pray. In Philippians 1 3 to 8, Paul was speaking to the church in Philippi. And Paul said to the church, I thank my God every time I remember you. How much a commotion? He said, In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray. With joy, Kaboshi Daraba. Did you hear that one? I pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. It means that you didn't turn back. It means that you became flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. You didn't turn your back on me when I was going through pain. You were there for me when I was going through poverty. You were there for me when the 
family wasn't functioning properly. You were there for me. When uh, enemies were saying, where is his God? You were there for me. When I didn't have to eat, you were there for me. It is God who says people like that our way. And people who call them mad, they will say, that, why are you supporting that girl? Why are you supporting that church? Why are you supporting that pastor? Why are you supporting so and so? And they will say that, you know what? I don't care what you think, but I have been called. I have been told all my sacrifice. One day after church, one of our uh, members came to me, or so forth, and the lady came to me, that's okay, and the lady came to me and he said, Pastor, I want you to understand this. You have affected my soul, and I give my soul to you. I was like, oh my God, I have never heard that sentence ever in the 30 years of ministry I have been in. How can you say such a thing? But there was a revelation in there. Hallelujah. She was saying that I am prepared to go that journey with you. I am prepared to get your back. I am prepared to give my offering. I am prepared to sow my seed. And even if I don't have, I will take extra job in order to see the vision fulfilled. I am prepared to come to your house and clean your toilet and clean your house. I am prepared to cook for you. I am prepared to travel with you wherever you go. I am prepared to wake up 3 a.m. if you need me to do something for you. I am prepared to send me to Timbuktu after Mongolia. I am prepared. He said you have affected my soul and I give my soul to you. Ha! Amen. And I have seen men in my ministry. I have seen men in my walk with God who started with me and they are still around me to today. Are you understanding that? I tell them jump and they just have to ask how high because they have become flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone and I will not make sure, I will not sit with that any evil happens to them I will not under no circumstance when they marry I am there for them when they're going through stuff I am there for them I will do anything possible to make sure that they are also okay that is the essence Paul was talking about he said you church in Philippi there is joy because of your partnership on the gospel and he said be confident of this that he who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Christ it is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart it is right to feel this way about you. Since I have you in my heart. Amen. But look at what he continues to say. That really blesses my life. It says, Makabo shit, Daraba. I'm getting all emotional now. It says, it is right for me to feel this way about all of you. Since I have you in my heart. Whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel. All of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you Amen. with the affection of Christ. Amen. Why will he say that? The in and in chains. Why will he say that about the church in Philippi? Even if I'm in chains. Look at why he says that. He said, moreover, as for you Philippians, you know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, mm. not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving. I gave my life and I gave everything, and not one church. I prayed for them, I fasted for them, yet not one church. The wickedness in the church, no one church. Whilst I was in Thessalonica, it wasn't them taking care of me. It wasn't them feeding me. It was a church in Philippi. Hallelujah. They were help, but they were not suitable. They were help. They said, for even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more and more. 
It says that once when I was in need, not that I desire your gift. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. He said, because of you, I have received full payment. Listen to me. It is like uh, I'm in Birmingham. I'm in Edinburgh. All right? And then the church in Luton is sending me stuff. The church in Edinburgh should take care of me. Yes. Mm. He is in Thessalonians. And the church in Philippi is sending one occasion. The person they sent became sick. Yes, they sent some more. Help her. Shootable. Who do you have in your life? <laughs> and then I have received full payment. And I have more than enough. I am amply supplied. Now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gift you sent. And it's believed that he almost died. Because he had to walk all this distance. What was the church doing over there? And that is a wickedness in the church. We don't give, we don't help the vision, and we're always expecting that somebody will come from Outer Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm here to prophesy to you. Your giving will create a memorial for you. Amen. And it will bring a great blessing to you. Amen. Because life will visit you. Amen. And joy will visit you. Amen. He says that they are a fragrant offering and acceptable sacrifice. Five pounds is not a fragrant offering. <laughs> Two pounds is not a fragrance offering. A fragrant offering carries ability to shake Hallelujah. foundations. A fragrant offering is an offering when you give it, you turn back and the person, you worry the person. I tell something when they come and show it to I say, you've worried me. I said, I said, I said, you've worried me. Because every time I go on my knees, I must pray for you. Yeah. <laughs> there are certain seeds, when you see it, somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I, I use your principles and I bought houses and the Lord has blessed me and stuff. I want to bless you. I was thinking that he took a, she took a checkbook. I was thinking she was going to write some 500 pounds or something like that. And she was 7,000 pounds. <laughs> and after that, she said to me that, you know, I wrote seven because seven is the word perfect. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> seven is the word perfect. And when she wrote it, I looked at it and said, Pastor, this is just the beginning. And consistently, consistently, this is a kind of thing. Not that I desire that gift because God has blessed me. Amen. But that it will abound to you. to you. Because anytime you do that which belongs to God, you do God's work and you set yourself in that way, he really blesses you. Amen. He really increases you. And it becomes a memorial. I remember when I was a student, I went very clearly. Uh, I, was, I studied in the East, and I came on holiday in the UK. And every money I got, I was so excited about it, lot of pounds, and I went back on campus, and 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 and, 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 and Pastor Adam, I, 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 I was just about to spend the money. And the Lord said to me that don't spend the money, it belongs to somebody else. I said, ah, all my summer break. And then this person came up and said, my, my fees have not been paid, my scholarship thing has not come through, so I need money. And I knew this and the person God wants me to give the money. So I packed it with God. I took 10 pounds out of it to buy some uh, stamps because I needed to send some urgent stamps. And I took the whole money and I gave it to the person. About a few weeks later, this man of God came from somewhere, passing through. And he came to visit us at the faculty. We were just talking and stuff like that. And he looked at me and he singled me out. And he said, there's something about you. I said, talk to me about it. <laughs> I said, talk to me about it. Then he started prophesying. How God is going to make me great. I'm going to be so rich. I will have influence. This and that and that and everything. He said, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you understanding that? Your level of sacrifice will release greatness to you. Amen. I teach all my children, both spiritual and physical, that you must be liberal mm -hmm. with your giving. You must be liberal with your money. 
The devil has gone ahead of the church and has poisoned certain people. That church is about money. And I tell people that is true. It's about money. I will not lie to you. It is about money. But not in the way you think. In the way where God wants to empower you. Amen. So that you can be free. Amen. Because the person who has got financial freedom yeah. is truly free. Amen. He <laughs> said that the offering was fragrant. It was an acceptable sacrifice. Pleasing to God. You know how people say that, that, that you give your pennies and that is God because they use the, the, the widow's might. It's, it's, it's a fallacy. It's of hasty conclusions. That's right. That widow gave all. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to use the widow's money, you must what? Give all. The Bible said that's all she had. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't talking about the content of the giving. It was talking about the attitude of the giving. Hallelujah. It said, and may my God. And so we always call Philippians 4, 1, 9. <laughs> four nine. <laughs> you know that four nine. That's where it came from. Four nine. It, it came from Philippians. Yeah, who shoot people and then go supply. That's where it came from. But but we quote nineteen on its own without looking at the verses before. The reason why nineteen was there is because helpers shootable have come the way and have partnered with help. <laughs> And I've said that Paul, you go and we'll get a credit. I tell you, I, for this time I was standing in the church in London. And I said that, you know, all those who support our TV program, don't think for one minute that I get all the credit. No. I preach the word, it's my face they see all over the world. But everybody that gets born again, you who give your five pounds, your 20 pounds, your 30 pounds monthly to pay the TV bill, you also get a credit. Amen. That's what called partnership. Amen. So we shall share the souls. Are you understanding that? It's a climbing a tree. Somebody has to climb. But others have to do what? Push it. When it brings the fruits, everyone enjoys. And that is teamwork. That is help us suitable. Because we cannot do it by ourselves. So then he says that my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Listen to this church. There is no other church Paul said this to. And he sent it to the church in Philippi because they have become helpers suitable for what he was doing. I'm going to finish ah. tonight. Amen. And tomorrow we're going to do some more. Amen. But tonight I want us to take about five, ten minutes max to pray. Because there are helpers. Just like I have helpers suitable. You also have helpers suitable. Some of these people don't come empty handed. They come with gold. They come with men. They come with frank incense. Some of these helpers, they come with stuff. Are you understanding that? Somebody walked to me and they said, I've gotten your bank account and I put this money in there because I want to make sure that you do God's work without pain. When they are called the person, I said, I have canceled the direct debit. Canceled it because it's too much. You put in too much money in the account. I don't like it. <laughs> he went behind me to the bank and really he stated it and increased it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, anytime I give to you, God blesses me. You're a good ground to sow and so I will never stop it. Amen. Today he has properties and his own business. <coughs> building estates. And he's still supporting. I push him to stop him. And I told you, there are connectors and they are helpers you have. Mm -hmm. Connectors don't stay. They might put you in touch mm -hmm. with somebody. They might put you in touch with something and then they are gone. Mm -hmm. But helpers Hallelujah. are always there. Amen. They are always there. Amen. They might be in the background, they might be in your face, they might be around, but they are always there. Mm -hmm. And they will make sure mm -hmm. that life treats you well. Amen. Amen. They will make sure the life treats you well. We've got to pray tonight. I feel the power of God here. Amen. I feel heavens open. Amen. For you to rise and be 
Pastor is told you we're still looking for a property. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the property and working on things. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I'll take some offering. So those who want to give, if you don't have all the money, that's okay. But what you can do to our door, and then the rest you can bring in later. But so that we can have our own property. Are you understanding it? Someone was talking to me the other day, and he said, oh, everything's in your church. He says, I said, listen to yourself. You are like a furniture in the church. How can you use the word? I said, oh, so Pastor Paul, I didn't even think about it. I said, yes. I'm sorry I used the word, you're damn right, but anyway. <laughs> I said, yes. The church doesn't belong to anybody. And if any pastor even says a church belongs to him, he's deluding himself. The church is God's church. Amen. Uh, what's his name again? Uh, Better this guy, Charles Wesley. He did it. His bit. Did he carry the church? The church to Better to Moscow. Calvin, Methodism, um, Presbyterian. All this. They all move on. They dead and gone. One day will come after fifty. Well, one hundred fifty years. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I will be gone. Are you understanding it? FCI. That's right. After he is 180 years. Amen. As I was so awesome, I said, but you need a memorial. Turn to somebody and say, you need a memorial. You need a memorial. Hallelujah. Amen. You need a memorial so that you can say that this new edifice we got, I was part of it. Because I connected with my pastor. I have become a flesh of his flesh. And a bone of his bone. I look at him like Peter looked at Jesus and said, To whom shall I go? If I can eat your blood and I can drink, I can drink your blood and I can eat your flesh, you can also have my money, my talent, and everything I have. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Help us, suitable. Shall we rise? They went by the riverside and this lady called Lydia got converted. Very powerful woman. Rich woman. And said, I give my house for the gospel. And so the steps started, the chest started in her house. She was a dealer in purple. And leading the stuff. And she made sure that her money supported her. And so the foundation of the church had to do with a lot of giving and sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And they said, Paul, we will not let you go. We will personally make sure that wherever you are in the world, you have enough. So you don't have to think. And the order of ministry is like that. Paul was, was, they didn't have planes in those days. But he was on ships and things like that. And they were cost so much money. Those days, people could not travel. The poor walk. And if you're fortunate to have a donkey, then uh, you go on a donkey. But Paul was going on ships and things like that. His body was preserved because some people decided that we are going to connect with him. Mm -hmm. Help us uh, suit her to It has to do with vision. For two minutes, you want to pray. Because some of you are helpless shooter. Mm -hmm. But also, God is giving you mm -hmm. help us uh, suit her. Who will hold your hand? Who will work with you? Who will make sure that the purpose of God for your life is fulfilled? Yes. Lift your voice.